there's some things that are kind of taboo in 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 talking about about football. One of those things is siding with the players on literally anything, right? Because how could you possibly be on the side of players, right, who are making, in some cases, reprehensibly large amounts of money and, and get to play a sport that the rest of us play for fun in our, in our free time? They get to play that sport for a living. So what, what, is any, what is the reasonable take that you could possibly have where you end up siding with them, especially when they're having conversations about their job being too hard, right? Uh, those, they're having conversations about the fact that, you know, oh, woe is me, right? It, 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 take it from a content creator, all right? Somebody that makes videos and funny things for a living, right? Nobody wants to hear about the struggles uh, that go into being a content creator. You know, every once in a while, I sit at this desk and stare at the camera and a bunch of monitors for a couple of hours because I just don't really have it in me to sit down and actually record anything. But you know what? I suck it up and do it because this is a great life and I enjoy talking to you guys every day. Uh, and, it is, and to be perfectly honest, it's not that hard, right? And, and I've worked very hard to be in this position and now we just kind of get to hang out and I'm in sweatpants and life is good. Right, but for the, the the issue, right, the separating issue, and the reason that I am about to side with these players, but I'm going to ask you to bear with me for a second, is the fact that I do not require some sort of physical exertion in order to do this job. Sure, my voice gets sore every once in a while. Yeah, maybe I don't eat healthy all the time because I'm at this desk so much. But I mean, there isn't actually a, a physical exertion where my body is breaking down. I mean, I have a standing desk. I ran a marathon last year. I then promptly ate a bunch of fast food because I thought I could never gain weight again. Turned out that wasn't true. But right there, there isn't a physical component that, that is causing me to break down. With footballers, that's not the case. Uh, and, and there was a very interesting quote that came out recently that I'm assuming I referenced in the thumbnail of the title, right, from Rodri. Basically, I think we're close to that talking about players going on a strike due to the increasing workload. Uh, it's the general opinion of the players, and if it keeps this way, we'll have no other option. And to be perfectly honest, good for them. Seriously, good for them. Because I can't even tell you how amazed I am that players actually play as much as they do. Right now, I, I realize, like, in, in every country, there is a bit of a different perception of how long of a break you're supposed to get. If you sneeze in Denmark, you get two years paid vacation, right? In the United States, if you shoot yourself in the foot on accident, you probably get 48 hours paid leave, right? And I realize there is you know, all sorts of gaps in the middle uh, in, in, in all sorts of interpretations and culturally expected things, depending on what country or what part of the world that you happen to come from, in terms of how much time you're supposed to get off. But where I come from in professional sports, it is known that professional sports are pretty brutal on your body. And so for all of the major professional sports leagues in the United States, there is a pretty significant offseason. For some of them, it's kind of like school where you get two, two and a half months in the summer where you don't have to do it, which is the only reason that teachers don't go insane. Uh, and for some like NFL, I mean, there's really a five, six month gap in between actual competitive games on the field because it's a particularly brutal sport on your body and that's just the way the calendar has is always been right you play one game a week and then there is a giant off season where you're able to rest and recover and and get your body right and in a lot of cases get the surgeries that you need to get your body functioning again and in football the thing that always blew me away when i in the united states transitioned to my soccer fandom to really carrying uh, carrying about it all over the world what blew me away is the fact that there isn't that offseason. There really isn't, ever. I mean, these guys play nonstop. And it's one of those things where you and I probably enjoy playing football in our free time, right? Maybe once or twice a week, I'm in a city park playing with a men's league team or whatever, and I get a lot of joy from that. I have a lot of fun playing with those men's league teams, and, and it's just you know, good a good way to get outside, to scratch the competitive itch, whatever. Enjoy the sport. When you do something every single day that's not eat, sleep, or take a piss, right, it gets old, right? It, not only does it get old, and not only does it become a job, it is very physically difficult, Okay, imagine how sore you are after you play football once, right? Let's say you play football once or twice a week, right? And you come home and you wake up the next morning and you're a little sore. Now do that basically every day without stopping. I mean, if you look at the schedule of somebody that plays major international football, 
Which again, woe is me. These guys are living the childhood dream of literally billions, okay? But you have the schedule of somebody that plays major international football. When is the break? I mean, seriously, every break during the season, if you don't play in a league that has a prolonged winter break, is taken up by you being called up to your national team. And every single summer is taken up by multiple international windows. And in most occasions, depending on what you know, continent, the nation that you come from plays in, you have a major international tournament that you are supposed to play in. Okay, and if you don't, you're unpatriotic, right? And if you miss club matches, then you value your country more than your club, and that makes you a liability. And it is this kind of vicious cycle, and the clubs lean into this. I mean, there's the famous, I, I don't even know if it was that famous, just a video that kind of blew my mind that I happened to see where Barcelona finishes its league campaign and then gets on a plane to fly to Japan to play a couple of friendly matches and do some sort of post-season tour in order to raise more money because the people that are actually running the club and don't have to work in a schedule like that at all because they're just, you know, to lean into the preconceptions a little bit, they're just kind of sitting on their yachts or on the beach drinking martinis in the club seats like that those guys decided it was a good idea to squeeze a little bit more money out to, do, you know, to, to kind of smooth over their terrible financial decisions and fly a very tired team full of hurt guys like Pedri out to Japan right at the end of the season, right? And, that, and to be honest, if you do that for as long as these guys do it, right? Let's say you are Rodri, who's the person that's being interviewed in this particular case, right? And you're playing with Spain and you go all the way to the end of that tournament. I mean, you just, there's a breaking point. There has to be a breaking point because legally speaking, right? How many days, how many paid days are you supposed to get off? I don't know. But I feel like in a lot of these countries, footballers might actually be running up against that law. You know what I mean? I, I, I work now with a professional soccer player, and Julian Gressel who plays for Inner Miami. We do the player-manager podcast together. And he's, uh, the, the stretch that he went on, particularly early point of the season, I mean, it's basically every day that you're going in for something, whether it's treatment and this and that. And then, you know, they, they had one international window where he wasn't doing anything, and they basically just took the week to live like a normal person for a week. And then, you know, but you got to stay in sensational shape and then you're kind of right back to it, right? It is, it is truly impressive how often those guys are just doing stuff. And he plays in MLS. And, that, and that's it. These guys are playing in more competitions, they're playing more matches, and they're playing in major international tournaments. It, it really, I think that it is so obvious that these guys are playing too many matches that people just have gotten used to it. It's like the frog in boiling water. We don't think about the fact that these guys are playing every three or four days, that they're very likely because they're playing every three or four days in training or in treatment every single day trying to be able to get out on that field and play again. Now, they make a ton of money, and in part that amount of money that they're able to make is because they play so many games, but I imagine... If I was one of these people in this position, because we always talk about that they have more money than they could possibly need, right? That if you went to them and said, you get a 10% pay cut in a month and a half long off season, every single one of these guys would say yes to that. I, I, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. Maybe the guys that ended up going to Saudi Arabia would decide not to say yes to that sort of thing, but it is bad. And there are a lot of nagging, unhealed muscle injuries and these kinds of injuries that are never able to heal because in order to take the time to allow those injuries to heal, you're going to miss a lot of matches. It doesn't matter when in the season you take the time to heal that injury. In the United States, you can nurse an injury to the end of the season and then heal it up in the offseason. That's just not possible when you're playing major international football. Now, I don't know what an actual player's strike would look like. I've never thought that the whatever union of players or whatever, it's the Players Association, I, it's never seemed particularly strong to me, right? It seems to just be there to make sure players do get paid what's promised to them in their contracts, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel like something that can act in order to try and make changes here. I don't know who exactly would be going on strike, but I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. 
I mean, I really wouldn't because the game, the way it is played now is more physically demanding than it has ever been in history. If you asked people 30 years ago that were playing in the Premier League to play at the level that is required physically now, distances run, number of sprints per match, you know, all that boring analytics shit, right? And to do that over the same match schedule that they are being asked to play now, eight Champions League league stage matches, you know, League Cup playing straight through December and January, particularly in the Premier League, right? I, they, they would have fallen apart. They would have evaporated, right? Like I, I, like you poured a soda on a hot sidewalk, their legs would have just, you know, like they, they wouldn't have been able to handle it, right? Because I, like, to be honest, there's more money in this than anybody else. And even though they're spending money on the best sports science money can buy, they can't keep these guys together. And to me, the greatest example that this whole system super fucked up is Cole Palmer. And I realize it's probably not the first name that you expected me to hear. Cole Palmer skipped an England camp in September because of fatigue. September is one month into the season, quote unquote. That, I mean, look, if you are one month into the season, allegedly, you should not be skipping anything because of fatigue. But that just shows that for these guys, the season never starts and it never ends. It just goes. And you just run on that hamster wheel until your hamstrings start popping. And then, you know, you try to get them sewed back together so you can keep running on that treadmill because everything in your life depends on you being able to play football at the highest level. And honestly, they probably have something in their mind that's telling them you're lucky to be able to do this. Don't be a bitch. Don't sit out like you. You are really lucky to be able to do this. And, and a lot of these guys are in a situation where if they're not able to continuously do this, like most of these guys aren't Rodri. Right? Most of these guys, if they go down and they go, hey, boss, I, my legs are super sore. I, you know, my ankle's killing me. My knee's been brutal recently. Like, I, I think I need to sit out for a month just to be able to feel better. They're not getting back in the team. Their career is going to take a completely different turn if they try to shut it down in a way that very few players in the world could shut it down and then come back and have their spot waiting for them. Because it's a brutal cutthroat world. And so I think the last part of this is that a lot of players, even if you tried to do a strike, would see that as an opportunity, that I'm going to be able to grind it out and be a little bit tougher when in reality, if we actually won, and, and, and you know, this is the fan perspective, right? Because I guess all of this up to this point could be a, well, who gives a shit, right? But if we actually want really high quality football, these guys at their best, we're not getting it right now because they're all falling apart. And if we actually want that, let's stop doing fucking two-month-long preseason and postseason tours and give them an offseason. Let's can the League Cup and stop adding games to the European calendar, and let's play. And also, I like the Nations League. Congrats to San Marino on the win. No, less international matches. Sorry, not sorry, right? Nobody cares about international matches if it's not the Continental Tournament or the freaking, you know the the world cup obviously so there there's your solution right there needs to be a hard limit on the number of friendlies you can play in the off season so that we stop with these month-long tours in the united states which i realize is limiting my ability to watch these teams play right but the, you got to take games away from somewhere and the easiest ones to me to take away are the ones that don't mean anything and if they don't actually do that which of course they won't because those tours make money there is going to continue to be noise about this and the more and more they add to the schedule and the more fun games that are, our, that are given to us to watch, the worse this whole problem is going to get. And I don't really know where it ends, but it, something's got to give eventually. The problem is the amount of pressure that has to build up to get an actually large number of players to go on strike for all the reasons I was just talking about is a lot. And something should definitely happen way before that to make sure that these guys can perform at their best so we can actually watch them perform at their best and stop watching guys go down with injuries every five seconds. Seriously.